Kosich. I'm the co-chair together with Elaine Apatang of the Citywide Neighborhood Committee. And we welcome everyone here uh, um, who is here in person and also those on Zoom. Uh, I just want to go through the kind of a roll call of those who are here and those uh, who are members of the committee on Zoom. Uh, so we have Will uh, and Elaine, uh, our members, and I think that's the only, anyone else? No. Just the two of just, us. And just the two Zoom, of us. The others are on Zoom. Okay, and on Zoom we have uh, Larry Cataldo and also Kathy Bergeron, I believe, right? Kathleen Bodak. What? Kathleen Bodak. Bourgeon. I'm here. Okay. And Lori's online as well. Lori oh, Lori, Soloway, Lori yes. Soloway is already online. Okay. So uh, we, I just, just want to, uh, uh, and also I recognize uh, Councillor Moreau Tabor. and Councillor Tabor who are also present here. Thank you for Thank being you here. Thank you for coming. And um, so we have a, an agenda that is focused more on other things besides the Citywide Neighborhood Committee in the beginning. Uh, we want to talk about the Portsmouth 400, and we have um, a presentation by Valerie Rochon and Trevor Bartlett about that. Uh, it's going to be maybe a 15-minute presentation, and then there'll be questions and answers. Uh, Valerie has to leave early for a meeting at the library, uh, so but I think Trevor will accommodate more questions. And after that, we'll uh, get back to some of the issues uh, that the Citywide Neighborhood Committee is dealing with. Um, uh, and we, we hope to conclude about 7 o'clock today. Okay. You could just remind everyone to, on Zoom to, to mute. Oh, okay. Let me remind everyone on Zoom if you could mute your microphones. Uh, Thank you. Until we, until we ask you to speak or okay. until you indicate you want to say something. Thank you very much. Okay, so I would like to just turn this over now to Valerie Rochon, who's in, who's the, um, I don't know what you're, you're, you're the managing director of Portsmouth 400. Is that your title? Managing director of Portsmouth NH 400. NH 400. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, thank you, Peter. Thank you for coming and thank you for giving us this presentation. Oh, we're excited. We, we, you know, I could, I could probably talk for a half an hour or an hour. So it's a good thing I'm limited to 15 minutes. <laughs> so you got away easy tonight. So I'm Valerie Rochon, and uh, and I'm thrilled to be here with Trevor, my my partner in crime, and um, Beth obviously is uh, City Councilor Moreau is um, the chair or the team leader for our signature events and the parade is one of our signature events so trevor's going to be talking with you about the parade i'm going to try to whip through everything else that's going on we have over 100 events um so i'm going to talk fast but at 6 15 i hope to just uh, stop the presentation hold it for trevor to to complete with uh, the parade information and i'll just whip through here so the, uh, the first thing that I want to say is that this is this this party, this 2023 year of celebration of the 400th anniversary, is a program of the city. So um, I am contracted with the city to produce the, all of these events. Um, all of the, we have no employees in our Portsmouth NH 400 Inc. 501c3 so every single penny that comes in goes out to our programs whether it's um, the legacy pro projects or the parade or whatever it is marketing every single penny goes out not a single penny goes to um, any staff so we're, we're happy about that and thank you to the city for that so you know we have some synergies between the citywide neighborhood committee our goals our values are right here diversity inclusion respect and accessibility seek historical accuracy community pride through education and engagement sustainability and fun we actually have a minister of fun denise wheeler if you know her she is more fun than a than a than a two she has more energy than a two-year-old mm -hmm. um and she is awesome and she's a minister of fun but you know if you look at our our goals our, our values and yours yours are protection and preservation of the quality of the city's neighborhoods that you know that's that's and we're talking about this plaque program seek historical accuracy um, community pride is what you're trying to build in, in throughout the neighborhoods and um, um, 
preservation of the quality of the city neighborhoods, their sustainability. Fun, you do the holiday lights program and uh, um, comp like competition, and uh, you know, I'm not sure what else you do that's the, that's the National fun. National night out. National night out, mm -hmm. exactly. So all of our values are shared by you, and, and we're happy to be, be here to be able to talk with you about that. So we're celebrating 400 years from the people of the Dawnland to the English settlement to Portsmouth of today to Portsmouth of the future. We want the children involved. We want all the students involved. Um, we want Portsmouth of the future to be featured in, in all the things that we're already doing. The fun has already begun. So we had the holiday parade with Trevor with his, what do you call those things? I just call it a horn. L loud, loud horns like they use in, in, uh, in, um, soccer, games, right? in soccer games, like, oh, yes, yeah. the Vuvuzela or something like that. Yeah, I that's they it. They could hear it in Kittery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was all him, Trevor. Um, the kickoff that we had on January 6th, 1 6 1623, was a huge success. We had the Set the House on Fire gospel concert. First night, the uh, 0.5K race at Strawberry Bank Museum. And we launched the history of, 100 of uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and 101 Objects, that book, which if you haven't seen it, you need to get one because they are. It, um, Stephanie Secord and Kathleen Soldati did an amazing job of pulling that together. It's a, it's a fabulous book. You need it as a keepsake. So the fun has already begun, but what's coming up next? April and May, for the very first time, the shipyard is doing guided tours of the ship, shipyard and museum. Typically, that's a group project. You know, when I was with the, I was formerly the chamber um, president, chamber collaborative president, and we had all our staff and our tour folks uh, go as a group to see the museum, see the shipyard and museum so we could talk about it. Now it's open from April through October, and Trevor has been working very closely, and Ken's going to be our point man, I understand. Thank you, Ken Goldman, um, is going to be our point man for, for this, to be able to get uh, whoever wants, to, any U.S. citizen who wants to go on a tour of the shipyard and the museum, I would highly recommend it. Recommend it. It's, it's fascinating, and you really need to see what, what, what our military is doing over there. You really need to see what's happening over there. And the museum is fabulous. Um, keeping history above water, Stephanie, has been, this is a national conference that Stephanie Secord was able to get here for 2023 just for these celebrations because we're talking about sustainability, keeping history above water. Um, Earth Day, we've got some, some um, the Portsmouth Sustainability Committee plus the students for, oh, SECO students for sustainability and they Eco Club are all involved in doing some eco, some uh, Earth Day events. You have to go to PortsmouthNH400.org to see what those events are, but they're going to be great. And the Handel and Hayden Society out of Boston is actually going to be performing a, be performing a concert at St. John's in, in uh, April. So uh, just so much going on. I'm going to say to the signature event, the Portsmouth Grand Parade is happening in June. That's all I'm going to say, because that's Trevor's thing. Mm -hmm. um, the other three events I want to just sh I just want to tell you about quickly in June, we have the Seacoast Pride event. An interesting thing about the LGBTQ community, when we ask people to talk about their history, what's happened before, what's happened in the last 50 years, because um, we've talked about all the history before. There is no history for the LGBTQ community because they didn't come out of the closet. They weren't spoken about. There is no history there. But in the last 50 years, there's been a lot of movement to uh, to uh, recognize and honor these folks, and that's what they're talking about. And for, so the Pride Parade will, will really speak to the last 50 years. We're doing a vintage baseball game. It's Dover, Rye, Newcastle's, and Portsmouth 400th anniversaries all at the same time. Dover challenged us to a vintage baseball game, which we've accepted. <laughs> it's in June. It's at Leary Field. Um, and in the vintage baseball games, apparently, who knew, there are uh, nationwide organizations that play vintage baseball. They play by the old rules. Um, you, you know, they don't wear gloves. You can let the ball bounce and then grab it because it's better than killing yourself with a fly <laughs> ball, right? So 
um, special bats. I mean, it's it's, it's going to be a hoot, um, and that's in June. And then Juneteenth, um, Jerry Ann and the Black Heritage Trail of New Hampshire is planning a huge event, um, particularly a, a one-day uh, music fest, which is reggae, spiritual, gospel, and jazz at Strawberry Bank Museum. So they are planning um, four days of education, music, and Beth? Uh, you, there's somebody that's trying to get in to oh, watch. Thank so you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I took my glasses off and didn't see it, Thanks. so thank you for that. <laughs> J yell if that happens again, people. <laughs> Um, July is a really busy month, and I'm only hitting the highlights here. There are a heck of a lot more uh, um, events that are happening. But there's a uh, masquerade ball fundraiser for Little Italy Carnival happening in July. The Ports of the Athenaeum is coming out with a series called Then and Now. They've blown up historical pictures of the buildings, uh, not only downtown, but I think a little further out, and asking whether you're a retail or a restaurant or a bank or a business, whatever it is, do you want these posters in your in your window to show this is what it used to look like? Um, you know, like the uh, Alley Jewelers building looks exactly the same. So Steve can put <laughs> a picture up and say, here it is, here it is. So, um, but that'll be that'll be really fun. And they're supposed to do a, a map of where all of these are, so you can go and take a look at all of them. And then, of course, we have the tall ships coming in uh, in July. They have more tall ships coming in. We're building a huge, what we're calling Flotilla 400, and that's a uh, operation between Sail Portsmouth, the Propeller Club, um, the, um, oh, there's a marine thing, can't remember who it is, but they've put $1,000 out there <laughs> as a raffle prize for people who will join the flotilla, the boats that will join the flotilla to make this a massive thing. And Jason Brewster from Brewster's uh, Bait and Tackle is bringing back the blessing of the fleet. What we asked them to do was to ask all denominations to be on Fortree Island to bless the fleet as the hundreds of boats go by, which they're going to do, and even um, the tribal leaders from the Wabanaki Nation, the Kawasak uh, Band of the, Ka of the Wab Wabanaki Nation, will be there to, I'm not sure if they're honoring or acknowledging, like the land acknowledgment, uh, acknowledgments that our Native Americans are doing. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, but they're there to say hi to the boats that are coming by. So that's July. August. Two signature events that we have. Little Italy Carnival is first on August 6th, and that is intended to honor the lost Italian neighborhoods. And so um, we have the Boston Circus Guild coming. We have Boston uh, Circus Pe um, Circus. Peanuts. Tum thank you. Circus Peanuts. We have music. We have oral histories, both playing and being recorded um, from those that either were there and, and lost their homes or um, their generations that followed. Um, it's going to be an all-day event. It's going to be free to the public, but it's costing, I'm going to tell you it's costing tens of thousands of dollars to put this on, therefore the masquerade ball that we just talked about in July to raise funds for this. So, And we have raised most of the funds, and by we I mean this incredibly, incredibly hardworking team that's uh, for the Little Italy Carnival team that's doing that. The other big event that we have, um, sort of our anniversary, well not sort of, it is our anniversary party, and we'll have a cake for 700 people to approve it. Um, it's August 15th. It's 700 plus of our closest friends that, that will be on one long white linen tablecloth table on Congress Street from Market Square to Jumpin' Jays. Mm -hmm. It's going to be catered by Foster's Clam Bake. It's going to be a huge clam bake. And we will have, we will have very few speakers, but we will have some entertainment. And the music hall is going to turn their stage around, so that's our stage. We'll have a whole bunch of TVs uh, that'll be going up and down Congress Street so you can see what's happening on the Music Hall stage. Um, and we have a, a surprise event at the end that will literally knock your socks off, which I'm not going to tell you about. <laughs> so um, that's those are our so signature events that we're very, very excited about. In September, you have the air show returning. We have the Lantern Festival put on by the Alliance for Greater Good. It's a celebration of 400 years of the kindness of the city, 
of the Open Door. And then, of course, we have the BIPOC Festival coming back in September. Um, we're not sure where that, I don't know if we know where that's going to be yet. I think it's outgrown. It's going to be uh, Pleasant Street. It is going to be on Pleasant Street. Great. No, that's what they're working towards right Thanks, now. Beth. It's, they've outgrown the parking lot at Vita Cantina, so um, they have to move in. And then in October, we have the Westival. The Westival is going to be talking about, is really going to feature um, because of who settled in the West End, the English and Irish immigrants. So um, talking about the history of Portsmouth and, and, what, and, and how the city has grown by the people who came here to live here. So uh, there's going to the uh, Portsmouth Peace Treaty of seven. The dip, diplomats of Portsmouth is happening throughout the summer. I put it here because it fit here, but just wanted to tell you about it. And then of course you've got Trevor and Denise who are going to be doing the ha Halloween parade. Which um, since Trevor's like the guy who does the Halloween parade, it's going to f he's, <laughs> was he's still very involved. He says was he's full <laughs> of baloney. He is, um, and of course it's going to feature. 2023, everything about 2023. In November, we have we have the P people of the Dawnland Story Fest at Story Bank at Strawberry Bank Museum, trying very hard to um, really bring in all of our Native American and Indigenous folks into everything that we're doing. Um, but something really special, the music hall asked the Portsmouth Symphony Orchestra. Orchestra, I'm trying to speak fast. Oh, I have <laughs> 30 seconds left to commission a very special piece for 2023 for the 400th anniversary, which PSO did, uh, and they will be performing with Portsmouth Per Musica on November 5th at the Music Hall, this piece for the very first time, which is f amazing. Um, in December, Starby Bank is planning to do the candlelight stroll, of course, but they are going to focus on 400 years of winter celebrations. And Jim Splain and his group are doing, are they gonna, they're going to have a ceremony to bury the 2123 time capsule. We've asked him to make sure he knows where to find it, Peter, so. Because <laughs> um, he hasn't found the last one, that's okay. Yeah. So, we have some legacy projects. The meeting that Trevor and I need to scoot to is the very first community engagement meeting with the community for the Endeavor uh, sculpture that's going to be I in uh, Bolinquo Gateway Park. That's the legacy project that our legacy team has worked like crazy on. They've raised a lot of money for it. Um, and that starts tonight with artist Sija Shen in, in, uh, in a community engagement project over at the library. If you finish up here and you have time, scoot over there. I have to introduce her at 6.30, so that's why I'm scooting. <laughs> um, you know that the history of uh, Portsmouth in, uh, in 101 Objects, that's the book we already talked about. And then Dennis Robinson is doing something again for the students. This is for students of all ages, but really focused for like the fifth grade through mm, for freshman, sophomore year of high school. It's a, it's a, we're calling it a comic book. It's not a comic book. It's an illustrated educational booklet that Denise Wheeler, again, our Minister of Fun, worked really closely with Dennis on. Um, to tell the story, it's about two kids who use their phones and they hit something, God knows what, and they go back in time and they meet all of the people, George Washington and Martin Luther King and all the people who, you know, the, v, the people that you know in history who um, have contributed to the history of Portsmouth over the last 400 years. Um, and th now I'm turning it over to uh, Trevor, if you, unless you have any questions. If you have qu questions, I have three minutes to answer them, and I'm happy to do that. Yes? I don't really have a question. I just want to thank you and your whole committee for what you're doing. It's absolutely incredible. Thank you. I appreciate that. We do have just this crackerjack <laughs> committee, um, Trevor being one of them. We have our executive team. We also have a management team um, that approves all of these applications because for two reasons. We want to make sure that, A, we're not duplicating efforts, and B, something like the Bless Blessing of the Fe Fleet, Sail Portsmouth Propeller Club, they were all working in silos, and we were able to bring them together for this flotilla 400. So that sort of thing where we can bring people together. Um, we also wanted to make sure that these events and programs actually had something to do with the history of Portsmouth, whether it was 400 years ago or in the last 50 years where we're concentrating. So we have, we have about 100 volunteers who are working on this, so I thank you for that. Um, and 
uh, it's just going to be, I mean, I'm exhausted thinking about all of the events that I have to go to because I'm so excited about them. So um, thank you. Val, okay. um, the comic book is actually, they call it the graphic novel. That's what the artists are calling it. Really? Yes. Okay, that's changed a couple of times. So that's great, though. The graphic novel. Thank you for that update. I will fix this. Um, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank you. I'm going to scoot. Sorry so much for running. Thank you so much for having us. I'll come back anytime and talk with you longer. Okay. Which you, we'll might have you, want, you might want and not want. And if anybody has any questions that you can't think of right now, you can just there. email me yeah. and then I'll really get to Valerie oh, are there? to Trevor. Okay. Okay. Come on. Now most most of the residents have expressed interest in the in the grand parade, and here's Trevor. He'll he'll talk to us about about it. I just wanted to check in on our Zoom guests here to see if there's yeah. anyone who had a, a question. Um, okay. Well, we well we transition over. Um, <laughs> does anyone on Zoom have have a question? Yeah, you say and if you can just um, unmute yourself if you have a question. Okay. Uh, okay. All set. There all we set. go. I can minimize that so we don't. Okay, cool. Uh, which is, sorry. I think. There we go. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right, the PNH 400 Grand Parade. Um, you might ask yourself, why this guy? Why'd they give it to me? Um, and I'll tell you, I grew up in Portsmouth. I was the film series manager at the Music Hall for many, many years. And as such, I became the producer of events, small and large, uh, including I produced the Telluride by the Sea for seven years. Uh, and in those efforts and the skill set I built there, I got just kind of suckered into working for the Halloween parade. <laughs> um, Which is awesome. And just bite by bite, it just became my project. And I was pretty much the steward of that project for about 13 years. So I've done parades. Um, and when the executive team decided that, you know, really in the visioning ses sessions that we opened up this whole thing with in like 2017, the one thing that was on every single whiteboard was parade, must have a parade. And I was on the executive team. So bit by bit, <laughs> bite by bite, it became my project. Um, and we're getting there real fast. We have uh, experienced a number of delays along the way, uh, things that just could not be uh, done differently because the, the timing was very strange <laughs> with, with coronavirus and uh, inability to have meetings for two years. I would have been planning the stuff that we're doing this week I wanted to have done last year. <laughs> um, so you may be asking me questions I can't answer yet. This, uh, this whole meeting is a little bit of uh, cart before the horse uh, because our meeting with the city to get our final approval on our route map uh, and plan is tomorrow morning. So hopefully by this time tomorrow, I will have something to tell you guys. <laughs> um, but right now what I can tell you is that our plans are to follow the, ho the holiday parade route very closely, actually pretty much exactly, uh, because that is a thing that the city is familiar with. They know exactly how to set it up. Uh, they know how to work with that. Uh, many of our participants are going to be returning from the holiday parade. We are also trying to zip in uh, elements of the Halloween parade. Uh, my committee is formed by myself, uh, Bryn Sullivan, who works for the city and manages the holiday parade, Monty Bohannon, who also now works for the city uh, and manages the Halloween parade. Now that I'm kind of off that committee, <laughs> I gave it to Monty, really, is what happened. <laughs> um, the and uh, oh, and Russ Grazier from PMAC, who is wrangling uh, bands from out of town, and he is also in the you know holding up the, our our theme, which is fairly broad, is just the history lights our way, which is on our logo. We just want to honor if your if your float honors the past, present, or future of Portsmouth, you're in. <laughs> So pretty much you're in. Um, and we are reflecting that with Russ's 
element of the parade, which is going to be a combination of the Portsmouth High School alumni band and their current band. So it will be the kids marching with all of their, all of, um, all of the adults that have been in that band in the past. We will be bringing them back in for a big reunion. And those, th those who can't walk, we're, we're gonna give them a ride. Okay, awesome. And our route, I think I haven't mentioned the route yet, is going to be, again, it's the holiday parade. So starting on Islington, down at the far end, and then coming up Islington into the square, we'll have an MC there with uh, VIP seating or a platform that the city will provide. And then uh, we hook over onto Pleasant Street and dump everybody out on Junkins, where that will land them about two blocks away from the River Fest and the Chowder Fest, which will also be going on uh, that's that same hour. Okay. That's so it's going to be a big day. That's awesome. <laughs> wow. Do you have any questions? Is, it's a daytime parade? It is a daytime parade, wow. um, yeah. which is something Portsmouth doesn't see very often. Oh, uh, be we have asked, bec because the timing of it, we needed to have it be early enough that the kids were still in school so we could get the band. Um, it, but it needed to be late enough that it wasn't going to be scorchingly cold. So June 3rd became our date. We realized very early on that that was four days away from the Memorial Day parade. <laughs> that would be two parades in one week. Uh, so we've, t we've talked to Josh Denton, who is the head of their, that their organization, the, v the veterans in town, that um, we are just going to accommodate them right up at the front of, of our effort so they don't have to march twice, but they will be honored in our parade and we will make a space for them and put them right up front. Uh, was that your question? <laughs> yeah, so registration, um, how do we do that? Would it be by neighborhood or by, by individual, by group? Uh, you can do almost anything you in imagine. Okay. Um, we will be taking we will be taking groups. Uh, we have we will probably have a number of sponsors that will have floats in the parade. We're building one ourselves. Uh, the the PNH 400 float will be a thing. Okay. Uh, it's actually being organized by Denise Wheeler, our minister of fun, and uh, we'll feature uh, horticulturist John Forty's. Uh, plant life. It's going to feature mainly indigenous plant life, and again, trying to uh, mesh the honor of the of you know the 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 beauty of the nature of this place with with sustainability and keeping that growing. So it will be it will be a living sculpture on wheels. Well, that sounds awesome. And the registration process uh, starts now. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to, uh, get, when we get the approval from, from the city manager, we will like lightning fast be releasing, uh, we'll be doing a press release, the website will go up, well the website's up, but there, the registration form will go live and all you have to do is fill it out, tell us what you want to do and uh, Bryn Sullivan will get back in touch with you and say, and tell you where to go, <laughs> where, where to stand in the parade when we start. Um, so I have this here, if you could fill out your name, email, and just check off which list you want to be put on. Do you want to just get notified when the when the application form goes up? Do you want to be notified when we have volunteer opportunities? Or do you just want to be put on our mailing list or all three? Just check the boxes. Okay. And I will, so leave, I will leave these and come back and get them. Okay. And I have, I have emails here for you too. Oh, good. Does anybody have, <laughs> does anybody have any questions about the parade? All right, any other questions? Oh, Wendy? Trevor, I have a question just in terms of the size of the parade. Can you just tell us, like, holiday versus Halloween versus this one? Like, are there a certain number of vehicles that are on average involved? And, like, how big might this one get to be? The uh, We, we kind of have a cap because our route is only a mile and a half. So we don't want to have you know, vehicles ending the parade before they've left, you know, before the end has started. <laughs> uh, 
but we have about usually 80 units would be a general size for the holiday parade. Halloween parade, you couldn't possibly tell because nobody knows. Yeah. It's an absolute mystery. They don't count heads. There's no registration process. We never know who's going to come or if it, you know, if it rains, we get half as many. So um, couldn't tell you. <laughs> Uh, but we usually get about 80 for the holiday parade. Since we're using that exact same route, we think we're going to cap it probably at 100. We anticipate we'll probably get more interest in this one because it's a Saturday and it's in the daytime. daytime so, so I think there's going to be a fairly large crowd and probably it's going to be a little bit bigger than we're used to. Uh, I know a number of the bands that... that um, Russ is looking at, uh, some of them are very small, like five member Fife and Drum Corps. Some of them are very large, 50, 60 members of the band that would come in on like three or four buses. There are, <laughs> the, the Air Force National Guard has, uh, has committed 250 airmen to march and they're gonna bring some vehicles. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, so do those groups count as one unit? Those would each count as one unit. Gotcha. Okay. There's someone else that's trying to get in. Oh. Oh, oh Jackie, okay. There you go. So used to my iPad, I was just okay. going to poke it. Great. Trevor, you mentioned alumni. Now, how are they going to be notified, alumni? Russ is in touch with all of them. I, I yeah. know that um, one of the Maple Haven residents has already been notified. She's an alumni. Mm. Yeah, so fantastic. Yeah, so he's doing he's doing that already. He, he's yeah he's he he hit the pavement early. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. Does anyone have any other questions about the parade? Well, will you be fun. scheduling? Um, some sort of cadence of meetings for people that are going to be in it. How do you communicate afterwards? Bryn is usually able to pull off the holiday parade with one safety meeting. Uh, we anticipate it'll probably be exactly that. Okay. And as you mentioned, it people can just walk the parade, ride bikes, skateboard, yep. dance. And it, it unlike the Halloween parade, motorized vehicles are perfectly legal. Horses, dogs, fine, bring them. Um, <laughs> there are very strict uh, regulations on how floats are constructed, okay. and those will be included on the application form that you'll fill out when you uh, okay. when you get notified. Got it. So you don't take, uh, you kind of go in the goodwill that you give them the regulations and they show up and they have a broken regulation? And, and we, we have, uh, we will have a, Army of volunteers double checking to make sure that everybody is up to code. Okay. And also, we, we part of the application process is you know supplying a drawing of whatever it is you're planning to do. Like we want un, again, unlike the Halloween parade, we want to know what you're going to do. Yeah. Halloween parade, we actively don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's better off. It's it's better that way. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Can people form their own band? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They, and I've seen, I've actually seen that happen with the Halloween parade a couple of times. The ancient order of hornography was <laughs> was a nine-piece horn horns band. It was brass, you know, brass band. And they they formed for three months. They practiced every weekend. They marched in the parade and never played again. Wow, that's cool. Can I? People in the parade give out candy, beads. Can give it out, can't throw it out. Can't throw it out. So you walk up okay. and hand it. You can walk up and hand it to people, but you just can't whip it at them. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. Sounds crazy. Yeah, no, no throwing cans of soup. <laughs> Please. Can't <laughs> court. <laughs> okay. And I did send in the in the email that I sent out to everybody. I did include the holiday parade rules just so you guys could get your eyes on it and get an idea of what the grand parade will look like. They're going to look very, very similar. Very similar, like like you said, correct? Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? Will that um, will it be uh, news tele, you know, 
Tele will it be televised in any capacity? It's a pretty big event. We're working on it. Uh, we, we have talked to two or three teams of uh, filmmakers to try and get coverage. It, uh, it kind of comes down to budget and timing. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're really hoping to catch it for posterity. We're doing everything we can to record almost everything that's going on this year. Okay. And of course, with phones these days, you can just ask people to yeah. send in their footage. Yes, and, we, uh, <laughs> and we're working with the library to create an archive for all this stuff. Okay, great. That's, good. That's, good. That's awesome. It's very exciting. It Thank is. Thank you so much. Taking it on. Right on. And I'll be waiting to hear from you tomorrow <laughs> about the city <laughs> <the> approval. <laughs> yeah, I'll hold my breath. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you all for coming out. Thank okay. you. Does anyone online have any questions? Let me get the gallery opened up here. Larry, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. I, I just want to clarify the date of uh, and the time of that parade. I just I didn't hear that part of it. The, the date is Saturday, June 3rd. June 3rd, uh, gathering at 10 o'clock, stepping off at 11. Okay, June 3rd. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome, Larry. Someone else wants to come in. Oh. Oh, it's Sarah. Sarah. Hi, Sarah. You just missed the presentations. <laughs> but do you have a question, or were you? She's still connecting. Oh, she's still connecting. She's okay. connecting. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions? Okay. Any of the Zoom participants? Yeah. You want to the whole clipboard? Yeah, no. Well, I have my own. Okay. Too, I can Great. Okay. Thanks, Trevor. Does anybody else have any questions? Or mm -hmm. I've got it, yes. Right. And Trevor, the sign-up will be online too, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it will Absolutely. be. Okay. Yeah, the website is Portsmouth NH400. Yes. In case you haven't been there yet. Yes, I'll reshare it with everyone again over email and on social media. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Okay, Peter. Yes, so um, we, we have a couple issues that we wanted to, to mention to everyone about our citywide neighborhood committee. Um, I think in connection with the, the parade, uh, we had been talking, a couple of people have been talking about the opportunity for the neighborhoods perhaps to participate in whatever way they feel might be interesting. Uh, some of the idea was, were, for example, to have a, uh, a, a part of the parade with neighborhoods, for example, yes. and mm -hmm. with every neighborhood wanting to participate as part of that. And that could include something like identifying yourself with an ethnic flag of the origin of, of your family or or maybe uh, the neighborhood itself in some way. So those are things we're thinking about. There's nothing etched in stone, but I thought that's something we just threw out there as an opportunity for the neighborhoods as such to be represented. Yes, and also you can, for each neighborhood, for example, Stonegate, you guys could create a sash for the Stonegate neighbors if you want to do that. Or we can all march together. We can all march together and just create a citywide neighborhood community, community uh, committee, rather, um, sash and walk together. You know, yeah. if the so. kids want to have to ride their bicycles, they can do that. If they want to have a little, form a little dance group, they can do that. If they want to play instruments, uh, they can do that as well. There are many ideas that we can we can do for the parade. Yes. Yeah. You guys are looking for some kind of some kind of Theme. Yes. So yes. Some kind of yes. Some, something that unifies the neighborhood. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They can unify the associations. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Is there going to be a beauty contest of any kind, like uh, <laughs> Mister and or Miss Portsmouth <laughs> Four Hundred? You know, I've I haven't heard anything like that, but that's something that I can I can ask Valerie and Trevor, and I can ask the neighborhood the neighbors if they want to do something like that. What do you guys think? Is that something that's 
I'll, I'll throw that question at Valerie. I haven't heard anything. I don't know if anybody else. I think I think that goes yeah. beyond the the range of, of duties for this committee <laughs> to do. <laughs> uh, but but if the uh, the uh, the umbrella organization wants to throw that out there, that would be their responsibility. I think. Sir, I know. That I'm pretty sure that so, that Most they'll invite Miss Portsmith to the event yeah. on Miss New Hampshire. I don't know. If, I don't know if either one is going to be. Yes, is going to is already is already spoken for for the other cities, but I'll find out. That's a great well, question. Well, there is a Miss Portsmouth already. Yes, I know. That's and what I'm saying. Is yeah, so we could ask. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, Put that in here. Hey, Mr. Portsmouth, though, do you want to volunteer as Mr. Portsmouth? <laughs> okay. Does anyone else have any? Ideas or comments about uh, relate to the parade now, forward. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, you're welcome to pass any ideas to us at some point, and mm -hmm. we can try to pass it on to the organizers. And, and yeah. uh, what's the best way to do that to provide any questions or inquiries? Email or you can email. You mean to me. us or to the yeah. Portsmouth 400 New Hampshire or the website. Yes, what I would do to guarantee that it gets to them quickly is go ahead and email the CNC email, cncportsmouth at gmail.com, and you may have received an email from us already, and then put in the Portsmouth 400 email as well, and that's online, and then that way I'll get to see it, we'll get to see it, and I'll just, I'll just ping we'll them and nudge them, them and say, oh, did you see that email from Dan? Mm -hmm. And um, that way we can get things moving along. They're pretty busy, as you can see, but they're, they're also pretty receptive, in, in my experience. I would imagine, or I'm thinking, that some neighborhoods will go the route of creating their own float of sorts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be, uh, take on, a, I'm sure, a, a variety of different um, aesthetics, and, and it'll be a lot of fun, I think. Yes, absolutely. The, does anyone online have any questions? Sarah, do you have any comments about the parade? Uh, I know you joined us late. Oh, um, Larry, yeah. Oh, hey, Larry. Uh, just, uh, uh, Elaine, just uh, give me an idea of what um, you and Peter are thinking about concerning the parade itself, as far as how you would like to organize it or what your vision of it as, as uh, as the citywide neighborhood participates. Okay, we're thinking of getting the the different neighborhood associations involved and working together, have the associations work together within their neighborhoods and come up with a theme, if they wanna do a theme, and organize that together and share it with us so that we can share with all the other neighborhoods, including Maple Haven, I'm hoping Panaway, um, and even Fosse, if you know, if they want to join us, we can all march together as a citywide neighborhood neighborhood committee associations. I know that some so some neighborhoods don't want to call it an association; they want to call it a group, which is fine. But you know, we're in the beginning stages of that, Larry. And um, I've just communicated with them to I asked them to attend the meeting first of all to hear about the presentation from Valerie and from Trevor, and we're working our way towards hopefully getting some ideas down together. Uh, Larry, I, th I think we're very early on in this. We haven't really had a discussion with our within our committee about any of this. We did, These are just actually. ideas. Yeah, I know, but this is, you know, we haven't come to any conclusions about what we'd like to do yet. There are lots of ideas out there. And, and the other thing is, I don't think um, this group is necessarily responsible for the parade itself. Mm -hmm. We're just throwing out ideas of how Absolutely, neighborhoods yeah. could participate. Yeah. So, and that's up to the neighborhoods to decide yeah. what they want to do. Yep. So, so Absolutely. we're still yeah. in the beginning of phase of, of identifying ideas. Yes. Right. In, in the yeah. spirit of, of the whole year, it's, it's You really, want to use your microphone? Oh, in the spirit of the whole year, it's really how, how can CNC um, connect back to the Portsmouth 400 right. um, and, and yeah, without creating a whole, whole bunch of separate programming. Yeah. Um, and this is one way is doing the Grand Parade with everybody. <clears throat> yeah. Do you guys have, do you guys have questions? 
people will have to um, write something to the neighborhood and see, you know. Okay. Yes. Oh. Fred? Yeah, we'll just send a, send something out on our page Absolutely. and see what every, yeah. you know, get an idea and see what people want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, you can always ask me for guidance with questions with for the 400. Um, we'll always be able to do that for you guys. Fred? I was, you know, it, it's early on, right? But I'm, I'm just thinking what would look pretty cool if I was in if I was in the audience is to see like the CNC potentially leading the neighborhoods. But I love the individuality of the neighborhoods, right? Like that they each get to express yep. themselves, that they're not a blend of all the, because that's just all Portsmouth. To me, it's like it let the individual, if they want, to express themselves individually in a float or whatever that looks like, to be able to, or sashes. I, I think that's pretty, pretty interesting because I don't think, you know, like if you didn't live in Portsmouth, you wouldn't know that there are 18 to 20 distinct different or 20 mm -hmm. more than 20 different neighborhoods, but there are. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. just would be pretty interesting to, um, to see that kind of go by. So, yeah, absolutely. So, in the way that they would have a banner. And then all yeah, the absolutely. neighbors would line up behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Individuality if That's they wanted, if yeah. They, yeah. they could just blend in. That's yeah. fine too. Yeah. But it, 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 it can be as simple as that, really. Yeah. It can be as simple as that. I love the idea of kids being able to be involved because that's, oh. that's one of those. Yes. That's, that's all they want to do when they go to the Halloween parade once they're old enough yeah. to be in the parade. <laughs> yeah. There. They love parades. <laughs> like this time, I'm like, I texted my wife. I was like, Swelly, it's going to ride his bike on June 3rd. Yeah. Because you know, that's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. It's and that's hard for the kids to keep up, the little ones. Yeah. 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 We've had that issue where mm -hmm. you know, we get kids going into other parts of the yeah. parade. So, yeah. okay. if, like, if we can do upload or something by the safety guidelines and mm -hmm. have the kids on there doing something. I think you would want to have some kind of a vehicle they that they could mm -hmm. keep up with, yeah, on a float, for example. Yeah. 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 And you said, so if we're, if we're planning on doing it, if we're planning on doing it, we basically just do that application and yes. it's online. We can submit it online or do we email it? You can submit it online. Okay. And yes. did you, can you just confirm those yeah. email addresses? You said it's cncportsmouth at gmail. Yes, that's if you have any questions that okay. you want to ask. And the then committee. the other one is the other one, hello at Portsmouth and a Yes, yes, you can email that. Okay. And as you, uh, Trevor was just here, he's the lead for the Grand Parade. Yep. You can also reach out to him. Yes. For, for those who are on Zoom, if you could just want to raise your hand or something so we can see that you're interested in saying something would help us. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I think Larry. Larry? Yeah, Larry. Um, La uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think that asking the neighborhoods to participate in the parade is a very good idea. I mean, we have like 25 and, and that's quite a, uh, quite a crowd. Yeah. And uh, not every neighborhood, will, as you say, will participate, no. but it certainly, uh, it certainly does represent Portsmouth if we can get um, as many as 16 or 18 to at least have a few representatives. My, my own vision would be that uh, some of them would carry a sign that says, um, you know, this is the um, Panaway neighborhood or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that's, at least that's a way of identifying that, that you're not from downtown. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. But Allen Park, they're very yep. active. Yeah. There's anything wrong with downtown, Mike. Right. We love downtown. Most of the visitors, the residents, and tourists uh, just think of downtown as where everyone lives. And boy, would they be surprised. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's part of the reason why we're trying to get the other the neighborhoods, especially in the outlying areas of Portsmouth, to participate in the parade. So what, so what is the awareness plan for that? Just like if there's 25 of them, I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled that there's like half the people in the room that aren't sitting at the table in yeah. our neighborhood. We're, we're happy to represent and be here. Mm -hmm. well, um, I want as many people as possible, right? To yes, be absolutely. Um, is there a plan or someone running point on somehow communicating that? Or yes, I've been I've been doing my best to communicate with everyone. Uh, yes, it's um, you know I mean I'm really pleased with the turnout here and online and I'm going to continue to get the message out and I'm going to ask you guys to also spread the message out to your neighbors email everybody 
share the um, share the email that I sent to you share on social media just get the word out because really the Portsmouth 400 is about the 400 celebration is about all of us you know it's about all of us and just think about it they're not going to have another celebration for another 50 years you know this is our celebration and then to get our kids involved the young kids, the teens involved, they're going to be thinking about it 50 years from now. Wow, I was a part of the event 50 years ago. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And I, I just want to add that, you know, we're, we're not trying to organize the neighborhoods ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're trying to uh, uh, get, trying to get the word that. out right. that That's this is a great opportunity. Yes. Self-organization yeah. is the best way of going because it's uh, it's sustained by the people who are actually going to do it. Yes. <laughs> We're not going to be doing it for anyone. Right. Well, yeah. in Rye, they already have banners going up up and down like Washington Road, like we Rye. Have, oh, yeah. We have them downtown. Yeah. Yeah. Do. Oh, yeah. I didn't see them yesterday. Yeah. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, oh, okay. We, I was at the original planning session of Portsmouth 400, I think sometime last year when they came up with all the pillars. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the ideas in the community, in the neighborhood pillar, was if people were to have um, block parties. And mm -hmm. I was yes. very excited about mm -hmm. that. And uh, the Little Italy Project has now really become the signature event for that committee. Um, but I still think it would be a really great idea, maybe you can say, these are some suggestions. Uh, you can involve your neighborhood in Portsmouth 400. Make sure they're aware of the website. Like yes. Like block party. Uh, I know you guys do National Night Out. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I will talk about that yeah. in a minute, yes. Um, mm -hmm. the, anything that would maybe neighborhood challenge, neighborhood to a softball game, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yes, no, I agree. And that's, uh, that's the one thing that I've been trying to do initially is to get people to actually look at the website and see all the different things that are happening and some of the ev these events are already they've already been occurring throughout the years but but now it's like it's the 400th celebration so everybody's we're all tagging on to that 400 and making it like really truly like a celebration throughout the year but yes i see what you're saying um, and I will continue to do that. I will continue to encourage people to look at that. And, and as for the National Night Out Neighborhood Party, uh, we recently came to an agreement with the city that we're going to keep the 16 individual parties. There was conversation, there was a proposal to have five central locations, but now it's going to Elaine, remain at Elaine, 16. can I just interrupt you yeah, just sure. briefly? So. Um, we, we, we were planning on having this meeting till what, 7 o'clock? So yes. Yeah, like 10 minutes or so. So I, we want to I want to try to suggest that we're going to stop the conversation about the parade now, okay. and then we're going to start talking about the National Night Out because okay? uh, she okay. wanted to okay. update us on what's going on okay. there. Thank so go you, ahead. Peter. Yes, I, as I was saying, um, Peter and Councillor Tabor and I and um, Sergeant Hood were in a meeting to discuss the proposal, and as I just said, we have decided to keep it at the 16 neighborhoods, uh, neighborhood parties, and part of the reason is because most neighborhoods want to keep the tradition of the neighborhood parties, and as you know, we understand where the city was coming from about the management of visiting all the different neighborhoods all at one time that's 16 neighborhoods the three departments it was just kind of overwhelming mm. but um, we're going to work with them and we're going to create a schedule so that um so that there's they're going to be able to visit all the neighborhoods but they may not be able to visit to visit every single one meaning not you won't get all the police Maybe you'll get just the police and DPW, mm. and then maybe you'll just get fire and DPW. So you know. So I know that most people, actually, they're very, um, they're very grateful for the presence of all the first responders. And I've relayed that message. Yeah. We've relayed that message to them. And um, so yes, we're going to stick with it, and we think it's going to be great. I, I spoke to Valerie about adding the neighborhood parties put on the calendar. Of the Portsmouth 400, and it's and so that it's going to be recognized as one of the events that's part of the Portsmouth 400. So we're going to put that into the calendar. I just wanted to make the announcement tonight mm -hmm. before we get that up there. 
You guys excited about it? Pardon? What's the date? August. It's August 1st. It's the first Tuesday of every, of every August, every, every year. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, it's actually a, the, the National Night Out is actually a police initiative that started about 40 years ago in Philadelphia. And I know that Portsmouth has been celebrating it for about 20 years, I believe. 20 yeah. years, according to, to yeah. Jim Splain. And it's, it, we're very fortunate because it's not just the police that's come, going out and visiting the neighborhoods. We also have our fire, EMT, we have um, the DPW, and then we have city councilors as well. And it's, now it's just a, a matter of managing, managing the schedule so that, so that everybody feels happy that night. And that we know we can do it, right? Yeah, obviously the the law enforcement people, the police officers, even though it was initiative initially for this event, mm -hmm. it, if it was just them visiting the sites, they could visit maybe six or seven sites. Yeah. That's about it. So the only way we can get uh, emergency people to visit most of the sites, at least some of the sites with some some equipment and so forth, is if if we create some kind of a schedule and they're all in agreement that they're going to participate. So and they are. So yes. if you have good food, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's not fair. Yes, that's yes. right. That's right. So, so, so that's pretty much what, what, what we agreed to. Yes. And yeah. um, mm -hmm. um, so, Elaine, I think the other thing we wanted to bring up is, uh, and this is just a, a bit of informational information, really, that um, uh, the city approached us with a letter that they wanted the citywide neighborhood committee to endorse regarding some a grant for the recycling facility, our, our waste facility. And um, uh, when Elaine and I were asked to support that, our feeling was that we don't have any expertise in waste management. <laughs> and while we, we support the, the overall goal of why the grant was put in and what the city wants to do, uh, we certainly can support that. So we basically reduced that letter to essentially the the core ideas behind this grant and that, that we would support without getting into the details which we felt we were not competent to judge. Yes. So just want to let you know that we did do that. We endorsed that grant, but we endorsed it in a very narrow, s generic way that we felt made a lot of sense. Yes. Cause, cause, because the thing is we, we're trying to make sure that we are not getting involved in things that really ha we have no competency or authority over and uh, so so uh, we're going to try to keep doing that and also the same is true with the neighborhoods uh, events um, I think we agreed that uh, neighbors who want to organize a neighborhood party and don't necessarily want to go to some other location yeah. why should they not do that <laughs> and when, when they do that, that that makes that event much more sustainable long term so okay. and so we advocated to that point right? exactly and, and so, exactly which is great yes uh, my neighborhood's fully in support of that because I because I think people will not necessarily just say okay unless I get a police officer and uh, the SWAT team to come to my neighborhood I'm not going to do a neighborhood committee a neighborhood party <laughs> nobody wants the no. SWAT team in there <laughs> <laughs> yes go ahead um, I'm at Spinnaker, and we were going to do it anyway, even when it was before yeah. it was five, mm -hmm. because we have so much fun at the pool. But um, what I wanted to know is, is there a website for the committee, um, and is there a map to show where all these neighborhoods are? Yes, I'm we... I'm hearing about some, and it's like, okay, I've lived here for yes. something years, mm. I'm not sure. There is a um, citywide neighborhood committee website that's through the city of Portsmouth page and I'll I'll send that to you it's it's in all the emails that I sent to everyone but I'll resend it to you and there is a map in there that shows the the neighborhoods it may need to be updated and I'll work with the city on that but take a look at that and and also if we if like I said if it's if it's kind of outdated I'll make sure that it's up it's updated for you, you. yeah but you can find it on there yeah even me when I first heard about the NNO 
I was, you know, I didn't, I didn't know about all these different neighborhoods, and now I've, I've learned a lot over the last couple of years. It's a great thing to have. It's Portsmouth great. is, um, you know, Portsmouth is a city that, that really values its, you know, its neighbors, and, and so we try, to, we try to maintain that for everybody. Yeah. So in the way of other informational things, mm -hmm. uh, Will, was there something you'd like to add that we didn't cover so far that needs to be? Um, just, to, just to kind of reiterate that we, we've been brainstorming some ideas for how to connect the neighborhood night out with the 400, and uh, and those those ideas once the committee talks about them, formalizes them, we'll we'll um, present them at future and meetings and put and, and distribute them in the newsletters and and via email. So. The other thing I wanted to mention is, uh, you know, that our, our citywide neighborhood committee, in addition to the night out, one of the main things that we focus on doing is uh, uh, forums at the different wards. So the next ward forum is going to be for Ward 4, and it's going to be at the Dondero School on uh, April 6th mm -hmm. at 6.30. And Lori, who's on, on, on Zoom here, Lori, do you want to say something about that? You need to, on, on, oh, <laughs> you're She's driving, driving. She, and you're muted, so. She's yeah. in the car. Right, now can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes we can hear you. Okay. Yes, okay. So it's a wonderful experience. The fire chief, the the town manager in the school is being represented. Everybody gets to address what's going on in their department. It relates to the board, and you can ask questions, and it's very interactive. And any questions you have, they're more than willing to answer. It's a lot of fun. If you haven't been there, it's a great source of information. So, so Lori, you, see you all there. Your voice was breaking up a little bit. I'm just going to recap a little bit. Uh, Lori mentioned all the people she had already invited who were on the panel there, mainly uh, people from the various departments in, in town, uh, the police, fire, um, city, city council. Uh, and these ward forums are a great opportunity for you, uh, if you're from that ward or from another ward. Just from that ward. To directly ask. Yeah, but you can attend any of our forums anytime. Mm -hmm. It's mainly we're, we're rotating to the different wards. Yeah, that's right. And when we at, we're at that particular ward forum, we try to focus on the issues in yes. that ward. That's right. But uh, mm -hmm. we hope to have many people on that panel who you can ask direct questions of and get some answers for right then and there or later mm -hmm. so it's a great opportunity to come out and mm -hmm. bring up issues that are a concern to you yeah and we also recently added um the school board to the yes to the panel. nancy clayberg from yeah, the school and so nancy board will yeah be, will be present yeah. at the dondero ward yeah. four forum yes sir maybe this is good for trevor but uh have we co coordinated with the city parking uh to get a five dollar all day uh, rate for maybe residents or not residents and how about like a bus out to market basket uh, as we have done in the past and maybe the church parking lot that is halfway to market basket okay you know if there's some coordination, yeah. coordination on that is it for uh, the parade I, you mean for the parade, parade day course, i don't think question. this is really our responsibility at this point. Yes. This would be the, the organizer's responsibility, but it's a good, a good suggestion. I'll Absolutely. relay the, the question over yeah, to Yeah, we can to pass Trevor that on to them. No problem. Governor, senators, congressmen, are they? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm sure that's a given <laughs> that mm -hmm. they will. They won't miss the opportunity. No, yes. yeah. no. Mm -hmm. Anyone running for president, for example? <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll relay that mess that question to Trevor. Yes, absolutely. So, um, Hi, Wendy. the uh, the letter, all of that stuff, like the endorsed grant. So oh, the grant, the, yes. That would that's always that's going to be put on the website. I'm guessing any any documents that yes. are sort of semi yeah. official. Yes, would we would we would put that on the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And the word. And and incidentally, just just to let you know, uh, we we. They, they had a strong, uh, the very core, short deadline to submit this grant. So they approached the two of us to sign it. 
Uh, normally, we would try to bring this to the whole committee first and discuss it, but the deadlines were so tight that, and that's why we said, well, we'll sign off on the general vision, yeah, <laughs> but we're not going to sign off on the details, but that will yeah. be on our website, yes. Yeah. And, I, and I was just curious, yes. to, uh, because I'm curious about it in general. Yes. Oh, but absolutely. also, um, there was one other question. Oh, the, what, is, what is it, award? Award forums. Award forum. mm -hmm. Okay, and yeah. you're doing those? Per voting award in this. Yeah, we have five wards. Have we already missed some? Like, yeah. we, 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 yeah, we, we had three, three now, so. Because we're all from three. So we had three. Um, yeah, we, 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 last year. Lori usually tries to organize, I think, two every year, maybe mm -hmm. three, but oh, okay. two. Yeah, and it, over a two. She did this. We did ward three. Over last over year. a two year yeah, period, we try to cover all five wards. Right. Can send two, you guys two, the link. One year, to three, 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 Hi, Jackie. Hi. Do you have a question for us? Well, I, I was listening and I was hearing a couple of suggestions and some ideas ran through my head. Uh, maybe I'll forward them out. One of the things I was thinking about was when you're talking about the parade was if, the, if each committee, neighborhood committee, was going to do something distinctive, maybe they could have a section called the Stroller Parade. This is the future of enforcement. <laughs> uh, and mm. the other thing I was thinking with the neighborhood night out, I, it's been going on for over 30 years, mm. way over. Okay. And because I was one of the first organizers back when I lived in Ledgewood Manor a million years ago. <laughs> but uh, it would be nice to have a Portsmouth night out sometime. And yes. maybe piggyback it on something else. Um, that was one of the functions in the 350th that was a lot of fun, was a get together on the South Mill playground. Now, this maybe that's not the right place now, but that would be kind of a fun thing mm. to do. And I don't know if anybody has that as a suggestion, but I'm just throwing it out. That's all. You're doing a wonderful job. 400 is going to be very special. Thank you. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. Does anybody else have any comments, questions? Thank you all for coming. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you very, very much. much. Oh, yeah, really absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thanks a lot. Yes, <laughs> and this is recorded, so we will have it up on YouTube. I'll, I'll let you guys know. Yeah. Follow us at, on our Facebook page, CNC Portsmouth. Okay. Citywide Neighborhood Committee Portsmouth. I'll email all of you again. <laughs> Thank you so much. Library, so oh, yes, please. I'm, I'm probably going to head over there, too. Motion, motion yeah, to adjourn. Yes. Uh, Elaine, Elaine, do you have a, uh, Elaine, can we have a motion to adjourn? Okay. okay. <laughs> Elaine, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. Yes. Aye. All right, Larry, Thank thanks. You. We got a quorum. Thanks, <laughs>